Skyrim 100% run in legendary baby anniversary editions weapons and armor part 1 let's go no time to waste the bounty for Edward one of the crimson dirks had been up for a year pretty much every jarl had a price on his head but only one of them had to pay it it was a big deal at the time but to be honest i'd forgotten all about it but then sanders this kajit starts barking at the gate about wanting to speak to the captain. He says he's been after Edward since the moons themselves were suckling babes. B what? <laughs> I told him to head over to the cemetery in Falkreath. He'll find the bastard dead in the ground where the worms feed. I wasn't sure if it was disbelief or disappointment on his face. I wonder if it has anything to do with the story in the book. If so, I cannot imagine how far he's traveled to get here. But ever since I lost my small fingers, I haven't been one to count. Well, out of everything I could expect, it, that succeeded it all. Kajit's notes. Couple goodies, let's see. Kajit finally got a lead on Edward. It seems he and his bandit friends fled north to Skyrim. But when he spoke to the guard captain, he tells Kajit the bounty on Edward has already been claimed. A ripe old adventurer showed up to the barracks on a horse, dragging the Breton's corpse up behind him. They tell Kajit the body is buried at the far end of the cemetery in Falkreath. Kajit will take a shovel and dig him up. After all, there are ways to die and not be dead. Kajit has heard of potions that mimic death, slowing the heart up to barely beat. If so, then Edward might still be out there. To that end, this one has heard rumors of a bandit wearing Daedric plates, plying his blood trade at Knife Point Ridge. Originally, Kajit did not think Edward the type to live in an abandoned mine, but now he is not so sure. Edward may have fooled the guard, but Kajit won't believe he is truly dead until he sees it with his own eyes. And inspecting the coffin... Yeah, letter from Erwin. Dear brother, are you well? I heard this terrible rumor that you died. You always said I'd be the one to kill you. That wasn't very nice of you to break a promise to your only sister. Unless there's another sister you didn't tell me about. So now you're not only dead, but you're a liar too. Anyways, I know you love to read, so I'll keep this short. <laughs> Let me know if you're not dead. I can come over and hug you with my knife. Urban. Oh, that's almost as silly as the rate of dragons appearing whenever I fast travel. Just give me a rest, man. Anyways, to Knife Point Bridge, where a bounty hunter has been having some fun. Anyways, yeah, legendary difficulty, Dramora's yada yada, that's paralysis. So I'd like to assume you have no interest in getting bored. Cause trust me, you're not missing anything on the combat. Anyways. I first met the Breton at Dead Man's Drink, said it was poetic, given what was inside his bottle of wine. I ain't much for poetry myself, I wanted to know what it paid. And paid? It did. I would have been okay with just gold, but he insisted I take his armor too. Not sure why he'd want to give up something so valuable, but he said it would help sell the story, a dead man has no need for protection. I could have reminded him that he wasn't really dying, but you know what they say about a fool and his gold. So we shook hands and he downed the drink. The next morning, I rode into town with him as my bounty. And sure enough, they buried him in the cemetery just like he said they would. Back at the inn, I asked him if he needed me to dig him up. He said I didn't have to, someone else would. That's one, let's go to the other, there's plenty, way too much to go actually. Guard dossier. Status, active, capture or kill, high priority, description, female, orc, late 40s. Background. Yaktugra Orkulg was a former blacksmith at the station slash in the Imperial City, a shop she inherited from her father. She was contacted by the Crimson Dirks and recruited to forge arms for the bandits, as well as laundered sacked goods through her shop. When the Imperial City Guard issued a warrant for her arrest, she fled the city with another member of the bandit gang. Operational notes, Yaktu was originally thought to have fled to High Rock and taken refuge in an Ark stronghold. However, 
According to our informant, she actually traveled with another agent to Skyrim. Reports of unusually well-made weapons and armor being peddled out of Embershard Mine may be related. This info should be forwarded to Commander Kaios in Whiterun as the mine falls under his jurisdiction. And a uh, quick rule, if I have cleared something before, I'll just skip to the end. Cause if you were that interested in early dungeons, you just go to the playlist. That and well, the Dromores do everything for me. Also, where's my armor? It's not in the chest. That's weird. I'll, uh, I'll still take everything. Yaktu's journal. I nearly turned around and went back to Cyrodiil because Bjormund wouldn't shut up. From dawn to dusk it was Skyrim this and Skyrim that. We hadn't even crossed the mountains yet and I felt like I'd spent an eternity in the place, but by Malakath, he kept going. He went on about all the different legends and the hundreds of uh, Ragnars involved in them. He talked for hours about his family and for days about his mead. Sometimes, he even sang about them. Silence was not an option. Perhaps if they put that on my bounty, I might have been okay with the rest of it, but as a blacksmith, there was one story I did not get tired of. The one about the Skyforge. It's an ancient relic, watched over by a great stone eagle, he said. Come spring, you'll be forging weapons under its wings, he said. I ate it up. Even though I knew it was a lie, the Skyforge was for the legendary smiths. And I was a wanted criminal. Unless the guard decide to quit looking for us, I was going to spend the rest of my life crafting Orsish, Orkish plate for bandits, idiots who didn't deserve my work and lacked the brains to value it. Maybe that's what pissed me off the most about Bjormund's tales of hearth and home. We weren't going to be. Welcome in Skyrim, or anywhere for that matter. We were Crimson Dirks. We had a home, and now it was gone. Oh, and as for the armor, apparently it's just an abandoned. Kind of feels a bit miscellaneous, but oh well. And I'll uh, I'll showcase it soon enough. Let's just go on another one. Mshara has a secret, not a bad secret. Like the Battleborn secret affair, not a boring secret, like the shopkeeper who hates his sister. Mshara's secret is too good to be believed. Mshara did not always spend her days like this, a cat who pretends to be a dog, no. Mshara used to be a bandit warrior, a member of the Crimson Dirks, famous rogues wanted by the East Empire Company, the clan mothers of elsewhere, and lawbringers from here to the Somerset Isles. If the guards only knew, they would come kill her, that is why Mshara can never tell. But her time is short, she longs for company. The other day she took to begging outside the city and saw her litter mate, Zaharia. Walk through the gates, Mshara called her by her name, but the Red Guard ignored her. Mshara is sure she heard her and it made her sad to know this. Mshara does not want to die a rug. Perhaps she will do something mischievous and get the Whiteburn guards to attack. Then she will be a warrior once more. So back to Whiteburn's jail we go. Mshara's confession. Mshara enjoyed her fight with the guards. Plus, her new home is better than the last. It is a very tiny cage, but she does not beg for food. It is given. Still, Mshara longs to see the night sky when she was a kitten. The elders warned her that if she stared too long at the moons, they would grow shy. And Mshara would never see them again. This made her sad, and so Mshara vowed to stop looking at the sky and kept her head down toward the dirt where the beggars belonged. One day, she tried to steal the silver out of the... Uh, pockets of an ord named Tyra. When she heard Khajiit's story, she took pity on the kitten and told her that the moons were not the timid creatures she had believed. She said that as long as Khajiit held her head up high, they would shine brighter than any star. From that day on, she spent her life in service to the Crimson Dirks. And when she was ready, her new litter mates forged her an armor made of silver, and in its heart, the piece Tyra had in her pocket, so many moons away. Mshara hid the armor in a hut 
northwest of Rorikstad. At times, Mshara has longed to retrieve it and wear it proudly, but she must be careful not to let sentiment cloud her judgment. Mshara suspects she is being followed, so she will leave the armor for another. Besides, it is not the silver in the armor or the moonlight in the sky that Mshara treasures, but the friends she has lost. Perhaps in death, she will see them again. Well, I found the hut, and there's the armor. Also a book, but I'm not gonna go over those. Otherwise, we'd be here forever. I will take every single goodie and... Oh, an ambush. East Empire Warden. Yeah, go away, bro. I'll just take care of you at my own pace. And uh Imperial Captain. Yeah, I read that correctly. Next I've one. I've been looking for you. Got something I'm supposed to deliver. Your hands only. Wait, really? Let's see here. Looks like that's it. Really? No. My notes were wrong, but for the courier to appear now is hilarious. Joshua Graham. We have challenged the Imperial Dogs to a duel of champions. They are said to be led by a great warrior, but anyone who licks the boots of, it, of the Empire can hardly lay claim to such a title. That is why we ask you to put these fools in, the, in their place. Find me in the Palace of Kings and I will provide you with the armor of a true champion. Once equipped, you will meet with a garrison of our finest soldiers and put an end to this milk drinker and his band of impostors. When the time comes, do not waste your breath with words. Let the fields of Whiterun drink down their blood. Yeah, as I was saying, if you have not done the Civil War questline, it will show up in the Dead Man's Drink Bar, but I have done it, so I had to wait for the courier, and he only showed up when I looked for it. That's hilarious. It, it should have come beforehand, but okay, so what do we get? Stormbear shields. I don't use shields. Unique weapon, Soon's Judgment. Stormbear sword, I'll take it. That's the unique armor. Storm bear, and finally, map of battle location. Okay, so showcase of what we've gotten until now. This is the Daedric one. Let's see. Oh, I love the helmet. The rest of it is pretty cool too. The Orkish one. Eh? I mean, it's okay. Uh, the silver one. Yeah, that's. I like it. Okay. And Storm Bear. Again, I don't care about the shield. Ah, the, the helmet though. It's not as cool as it could be. Anyways, Imperial Champion. Pleasant weather for a war, no? Ah, whatever, I don't care about the weather. For the Emperor! No, uh, the Emperor is dead, sorry. sorry. Goodbye, buddy. Anyways, let the battle begin! Oh no, oh, of course there's a dragon! Why can I not fast travel without a dragon coming up every two to three times I do so? Uh, another shield. Now, your helmet. That was cool. Oh! Two unique weapons. That is beautiful, I'll take it. And seriously, that helmet was beautiful. I've been looking for you. Got something I'm supposed to deliver. Your hands only. What do you have for me now? Let's see here. Looks like that's it. Got to go. Oh, it doesn't show the name, but it was a letter of commendation. Word of your battle with the Imperials is traveling across East March. So, Windhelm. I wish I could have been there to see their pathetic excuse for a champion back for his life. You have more than earned the right to wear the armor of the Stormbear. So, it is yours to keep. Fight well and may Talos guide you. As if I would ever give it back. Okay, let's see this one. A business ledger. This is a... Uh, regarding White Run stewards being worried about... Uh, goddamn, about someone wanting to assassinate the Jarl, so... To the stable. The Dark Elf was smart to choose me. Scars aside, I can pass as a stable boy easily enough. I'll tell the shopkeep I got bucked by a wild one, and I landed face first into the briars. I am smart like that. 
The other bandits always poked fun at my face, saying I look like a newborn babe. <sighs> no. But it comes in handy for jobs like this. After seeing how well the Dark Elf pays, the entire gang will be looking for a razor pretty soon. Speaking of which, I'm supposed to meet my mysterious benefactor back at the stables, and not at the Silent Moon's camp. Not sure why, but he says if I'm followed, it's best I stay in character until I'm... well, clear of the city... Uh, gates. Well, I hope he doesn't sneak upon me while I wait, I nearly soiled myself the last time. But, smart guy that I am, I bought this tomb to help me find him. Thing is, I opened it up and I can't for the life of me figure out how it works. Only a matter of time, though, for a guy like me. Yeah, dead. And our only clue is the Silent Moon scam, so... Let me take care of these idiots for, I don't know, the third fourth time? The bow has long been a player in the game, it's toppled many a piece, from Jarls to Kings. It does so without sight or sound, save for a rattling crown on a bloodstained floor. And yet, it's been far too long since it's had a chance to tilt the board. Broski right there failed to topple a piece. Dram took the flesh, but not the soul, and the game went on without incident. Now, the pieces sit idly by, refusing to move in their comfort. Even now, as I take aim at this target, I hear their indolent yawns through the draw of my bowstring. Yet the board cannot remain level forever. With the bow in my hand, it will tilt once more. However, the timing must be right. The top link of a beast springs hollow in a thunderstorm. I must wait for a quiet moment. One that's intimate when the Jarl is not engaged in talks of war and dragons. If the battle for Skyrim comes to Whiterun, I will be forced to redraw. But there will come a time when he sits idly by in his grand hall, and bothered by the world. In that moment, when the Jarl has a chance to finally breathe, I will sneak my way to the upper floors and... Make sure that breath is his last, and when I take my leave, cloaked in her shadow, all anyone will hear is a rattle. Cloak, huh? I am expecting a bow that grants me invisibility. Nothing else is acceptable, and this cave bear is awful. I, I've been trying to fast travel, bro. Seriously, don't ever pull up like that. You're a bear. You have no chance, even without the Dromoras. Oh, someone there. yes, there is someone here. No, 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 no. Please stop. I, uh... This is legendary difficulty, sir, 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 I am not capable of managing an unbalanced game by myself, okay? So, seriously, if you have seen anyone play as a warrior and be fucking amazing, please let me know, I would love to see that. It's my first time trying out legendary mode, okay? Conjuration did it, I, I'm amazing. I also have no plans on trying legendary difficulty ever again, cause it's just Please stay away while you pointless. Anyways, it's done, Brill. Excellent. You've done us a great service. I know. Here is your reward. Let's see. Fifteen hundred. I'll take it. Farewell, sir. Thank you. Now to the next one. Now oh, come on, drop right. It makes for a great transition. <laughs> and right. To the west of Dragon's Reach, now, wait, by the outside great. obviously, we'll find a bandit camp, where another quest is up to begin. Smuggler's Trade Notes The new source has been a real boon, skooma, poisons, black soul gems, you name it. We've got a line to a wide range of goods and an even wider range of clients. Which reminds me, someone needs to tell Akari where she can stick her her bottles of sugared cat piss. We are done. Meanwhile, we are filling our coffers faster than we can empty them. We're drinking day and night and still haven't gone through half the gold from that morrowing job for the corpse fondlers. With our Gonian patrols up and down the border, we can charge an arm, leg and tail for every crate that comes in. As for the zombie petters, they were pretty pleased the staff was not damaged. Creepy looking thing too, was glad to be rid of it. It's a shame we couldn't hold out a couple more days though. This morning, another buyer came by the camp. 
An orc with a face so lumpy he must have jumped at first off the top of Dragon's Reach. Turns out he was looking for the same stuff, offering to pay double. I told him we could have something better for him on the next boat from Solstheim, but he was pretty sudden clear there was only one stuff he wanted to buy. <laughs> Makes sense, the only thing uglier than this orc was that stuff. Maybe he wants to hold it up for when he shaves so he doesn't feel bad for being born. Anyways, I sold him the info on the buyers and sent him on his way. Couldn't get him to trade any of the valuables on his carriage, but it's alright. There's more than one way to part a fool and his things. I told the boys to cut him off on the road west of Whiterun at the burned down house between the Watchtower and Fort Greymore. Given how obsessed he was about that stuff, it'll be easy to catch him off guard. Oh, there's more bandits, huh? An ambush. Well, obviously. Now let's go and find the fire. So, more bandits? Uh, wait. Is this the right place? A Stormcloak soldier. Oh, yeah, it is the place. Because that's... That was raised up by a bandit marauder. And there we go. Modig is down. Smuggler's Ledger. Delvin Malvery bought dozen bottles of skooma for 50 septums and a favor. That's not what we want. What we want is the stuff Hazedoki delivered for Ivara of Olenveld and Lushak in Brittleshin Pass. Okay, that's all we need to know. Smuggler's fee, golden gems. They're happy with the hull. They say they're trying to open a portal to something called the Soul Cairn. If there's loot to be had inside, it might be worth it. We've uh, been there. It's not worth it. Not for what they expect, at least. And once again, this is taking forever. Except, this happened. <laughs> Great. Now I'll have to do the walk of shame, huh? <sighs> and hey, we won. The Dramoras are amazing. Ivara's notes. Couple books I don't think I have. And the staff. Fills soul gems, knocks back enemies, and creates a ward when you're not attacking, huh? Nice. The journey from Olenveld was long but worth the trip. We'll have a far easier time finding what we need to open the portal to the Soul Cairn. The pass is remote and yet there are no shortage of travelers looking for shortcuts across the mountains. As such, we'll have plenty of blood and bone meal at our disposal, but we'll need void salts and soul gem fragments to complete the ritual. Lushak suggested we contact the local smugglers for help with the latter. She'd been in contact with one about the staff of Hazadoki. If the wizard truly bounded his soul to the staff, as the legend suggests, releasing him might provide a worthy offering to the ideal masters. In any case, adding the ingredients to the list should be an easy task. Hmm. And does Lushak have anything of worth? No. Okay then, to Falkreath, where we'll find another piece of the puzzle regarding the Crimson Dirks. High priority, male, high elf, agent known. A member of the Crimson Dirks, a notorious group of bandits and marauders originally based in Cyrodiil. Little else is known about the target. Although some intelligence suggests he was often used as an information gatherer for the bandits. Notes. It was originally thought that an Altmer might attempt to blend into wealthier circles. But according to our informant, he's done the opposite. He stripped his armor and gone a native. Hunting game in the forests, south of Sunderstone Gorge. He should still be considered dangerous, however, and it would be wise to put a bounty when his identity is confirmed. Guards Bounty Letter Draft. Bounty to the people of Falkreath. Bandit, Sunderstone Gorge, okay. How about the other one? Guard's notes. The steward will have to sign off on it, but I was thinking we should have the bandit's possession serve as reward in lieu of gold. According to the informant, he might be carrying valuables with him. I'll bring it up with the steward when I have her sign the bounty. Besides, the more gold we save on bounty hunters, the more we have for the guard. I still haven't gotten approval for the funds to have Loth fix my shield. At this rate, I might as well just use the lid from my pot. Well, the Sunderstone Gorge. Dusk? Who's Dusk? Oh, it's that good boy. 
Well, you're a wolf, so... Ah, no empathy. Cannot. You'll... you'll attack me on sight. I'm Ayazrael. Done! Lovely. He's got his journal and a key. Good, because I'm not seeing the upper L. I didn't choose to be alone. A fish doesn't choose to swim, and a bird doesn't choose to fly. They just are. And so was I. When the guard raided our hideout, I didn't shed any tears. We were always going to be lost children, orphaned by the world, if not by each other. The others fled to the cities, but I sought the stillness of the forest, with only the moon and stars to keep me company. That is, until the day I met the wolf. When I found its leg caught in a bear trap, my first thought was to put it out of its misery. Yet, for some reason, I treated the wound. And fed the beast until it recovered. I don't know why I saved it. Perhaps part of me misses the others and longs for a companion. I'm no stranger to solitude. I've spent years relying on no one to save myself, but it seems at the end of the day, I'm still that boy at the orphanage parked at the windowsill, staring out into an empty street. Oh, goddamn bears. <laughs> there's always something. Okay, there's the... Uh, <clears throat> the armor. Elven Hunter, no helmet, huh? Okay. Well, let's see how it looks. Hmm, I like it. Okay, next. Now, to Iverstad. Or rather, somewhat to an unmarked camp north of it. Arena Fan. It has a note and a book, but I'm not reading books. I'm already fearing it's gonna be too lore heavy for you. I don't know. As a fan of the Imperial Arena and a student of history, I was very intrigued when I discovered Volume 8 of the short story collection, The Crimson Dirks. While the librarian consider it a work of fiction, I've calmed over the information in the story and much to my delight, how much of it may be true. For instance, there was indeed an orc who fought in Dwarven Mail after the Great War, who rose to the ranks of Bloodletter uh, before mysteriously disappearing. The same is true for the blacksmith, who abandoned her shop in Cyrodiil under equally unknown circumstances. While I have nothing on the Red Guard, the name itself may be an alias. But the last sentence is most intriguing, as it implies our Orc Bloodletter went north to Skyrim and began fighting in the underground pits. In fact, I've heard there's an Orc living in the Pthalfth Ruins who matches that description right now. I've requested the Orc meet with me in private so I can ask him if he is indeed the one in the story. I'm so excited. I know the book paints him as a bit unruly toward fans. But authors tend to exaggerate certain features. Besides, even if it were true, I'd be willing to bet time has softened his stance. He will be more than pleased to meet a true fan of the arena. I can't wait. And now we know who done did it. Well, let's go and get some more armor. And very fortunately for me, He's not inside a huge dwarven uh, dungeon. No, he's just on the outside. That's lovely. So I'll take the dwarven mail and let's see how it looks on us. Ooh, I love the helmet and the hood. That's nice. Now to Mistvale Keep. More specifically, it's barracks. For you guessed it, yet another Crimson Dirk. Antonius, male, mid-70s. Antonius is a former battle mage said to possess a highly analytical mind that is matched only by his more prurient inclinations. He is sought after by aristocrats in first hold for allegedly poisoning a court wizard named Alenia with skuma, although it isn't clear if he did so maliciously or simply introduced her to the substance. After fleeing Cyrodiil, he joined the Crimson Dirks and advised them on the acquisition and smuggling of magical... artifacts. Bottled spirits and old age have made him less urgent of a target. But all members of the Bandit Clan are still considered high priority and should be captured or eliminated. Notes: Antonius is believed to have a number of vices, most notably an addiction to gambling. Rather than search for him, it would be best to have a guardsman stationed near the pits where like-minded degenerates tend to gather. Crags Lane Cavern is said to be thriving with activity as of late and may be worth a look. And I've cleared that one before as well. 
I only upgrade that to the anniversary edition mid run. Well, actually, to the end of the run, so. This is to be expected. Antonius! Death with a Black Soul Gem. And he has some notes, so. Yaktu once told me I'd wager my own mother if the odds were right. So it's probably no surprise to her that I lost her armor on a bat. What I would explain to the blacksmith after she was done yelling at me was that my plan was foolproof. I have in my coin purse a total of 320 septims. My strategy was to wager 10 pieces at a time. If I lost, my next bat would be 10 pieces to cover the last wager. If I lost again, I would wager 20 and once again attempt to break even. If I lost a fourth time, I would wager 40 and so on. So unless I lost 6 straight times, I'd always break even in the end. Well, 10 straight losses later, I not only have no gold, but no armor and no bad to sleep on. I must have slept with Zenithar's mother or something, not sure why he hates me so. Anyways, I sold the armor to some high elf collector at the B&B bar. I should probably just kill her, I would kill the bandits running the pit, but then where would I get my fix? Question is, why is he dead though? Did he just lose the, the will to live? Anyways, Armor, co armor Collector. Of course. What kind of name is yours? Oh, we can intimidate. If you're smart, you'll walk away. Oh, it didn't work. No, wait. Completed? But... But that means it worked. With that... With that line of dialogue? Really? Mercy. Hey, let's just... 40 bounty added to the rift. Really? She's not a citizen, come on. Oh, a oh, thousand bounty. Fine, I'll reload. God damn it. So... How about I just wait? Does she go to Craig's Lynn Cavern? Because that's... That's empty now, so we can do it there. No biggie. Yes, she does. Lovely. That was annoying. Help, I'm being oh, shut up. You deserve it. Plus, you're only a placeholder NPC. You're literally unimportant for the whole story, and I am the Dragonborn. So, you know, kind of kind of have to. Orders. Huh. And there we go. The Orkish armor and Gambler's Edge completed. Orders. If the armor is verified as authentic, dispose of it and the targets as you see fit. The guard will imprison him, but Antonius will die for what he did to my dear Elenia. Ah, now that explains it. Okay, let's see how it looks. <laughs> it would probably look a lot better on an orc. I'll give you that. Back to Riften for another one. But this time it's not from the Crimson Dirks. So the thief is something I found before. Oh man, let me see if I find the note. Oh, it's in Bree's home. The fox told me he wore the cowl to forget himself and start a new life. Yet, I'm the one who cannot remember. Every time we meet, he's a stranger to me. Or was it a she? It doesn't matter. I spoke his words to a beggar, told her, Shadow hide you. She slipped me a note that confirms my suspicions. The grey fox is dead. And now that I have seen his headstone, I know for a fact his time is over and the cowl will be passed on. I'm gonna be the next one to wear it. And when I do, I'll become so rich that I won't need any memories. I'll just buy new ones. So yeah, I already have the quest. Beggar! Divines bless you. May the ground you walk quake as you pass. The shadow hide you. Of course. He'll slip me the notes. Stranger's note. You're here about a job. You don't know what it is for, but I'm sure you're intrigued. It's alright, you don't need to know everything just yet. There's a strong box in Bolly's house, placed on a dresser next to his bed. Find a way to crack it open, your instructions for the job are inside. If you're looking for a handout, you'll want to speak with my husband. If you're looking for company, I suppose I could do worse. A, a thief is putting clothes in your home. Oh, now that can't be good. I know. I can take care of it for you. Thank you. Here, this is for you. Oh, I even get gold for it. And both keys. Awesome. Okay, let's find it. Just by the bath. It's this one. Child's doll. No, thank you. Forged deed. I might need that. Nivenor's journal. It's 
doesn't seem like it matters for this one. You've made it this far, which proves you're ready for the real work. But first, let's go over why you're here. You may have heard the Grey Fox is dead. It's true. But the fox lives on in the one who wears the cowl. This job will tell me if that person is you. Who am I? That is not important. Just a stranger who wants to see the cowl passed on to someone who deserves it. As you might expect, the job won't be easy, it requires fast thinking and fast fingers, but get it done and you'll be worthy of being the next Grey Fox. Take the forged deed in the strongbox, then find a woman named Gizli in solitude. On her you'll find the real document. Relieve her of this burden, then place the fake in Erikor's house. She'll think she misplaced it. When the job is done, find the barrel behind the winking skiver for further instructions. A stranger. Oh, so mysterious. Okay, let's go and find Gizli. <laughs> let's see if I can do it first time. Hey, I did it. Okay, so. Erikor's house. That's uh, one of the Thanes, right? I think so. That's it. And now for the barrel. Final instructions. So, what's up? You are good. You picked her pockets clean and made the switch. Now, you'll need to put those skills to the test and more. In Silver Drift Lair is a tomb that houses an ancient North clan. Near a large chest is a corpse with a lantern, its candle still burning. It holds a key. When you have the key, open the chest and you'll find a sword that can raise the dead. When you find it, bring it to the grave of the Grey Fox in Riften. It's a small, unmarked headstone on the east side of the cemetery. Complete the task and maybe you'll even get to meet him. Oh, so it's just the current Grey Fox retiring and passing it on. Okay. Uh, guess I cannot... Oh, it's a dolphin. I had a 50-50 chance. I cannot rotate it. And I chose poorly. Ah, oh well, it happens. So let's let's see what else we have, other than pesky pesky Draugr that takes so long to do. It could be worse. At least it's not an overlord. And you know what? Let's just go get our rewards. The whole dungeon doesn't really matter, especially because I already have the shout and anything else from here. The Sword of Clan Ice Blade. Huh, got no no power though. I'll take the goodies and let's see. To my descendants, the ancestral sword of clan Iceblade has an enchantment that dulls the blade for anyone save those descended from our bloodline. It serves as definitive proof of one's ancestry above all other claims. Sea rolls. Well, back to Riften. And that's the headstone. Stranger's Journal. The curse of the Great Cowl is set to strip you of your identity, wiping you from all of recorded history. But the curse was broken long ago. The truth is, it wasn't Nocturnal that robbed me of my life, it was my selfishness. I wore the cowl out of pure greed. I left my family because I loved only myself. Then, my sister passed, leaving her son an orphan. The last of the Ice Blades. Heir to a fortune and easy prey for the wolves. With the boy in danger, it's time I took responsibility as the head of this clan. But if I am to be his father, I have to stop being a stranger. I must pass the cowl onto another and in doing so, the Grey Fox must die. Until then, I come to this grave every night bringing flowers to ask my sister for forgiveness. Well, that's a sad story. You've done well. Oh, hi. Grey Fox, hello. I suppose I met you before? Of course. I trust we'll never need to speak of this again to anyone. I mean, even if they did, would they believe me? I trust we'll never need to... Also, I'll take the journal as well. It'll do well in Breeze Home. Oh, it's the kid. Smarev. What a name and what a goblin. Now, to Shore Stone. Zari. What's up with you? I know you have something for me. Well, look what we have here. Uh, looking for a fight in yes. Legendary. No, no you're not. No you're not. Trust me. Okay, okay. You've talked me into it. Thank you. Here, this is for you. Huh? You're gonna give me the... Oh no, it's just a note. I thought it was gonna give me gear. Okay. We'll be in touch. 
wait to be contacted by courier. Well, I had to wait like half a week, but finally. I've been looking for you. Got something I'm supposed to deliver. Your hands only. Let's see here. Looks like that's it. Got to go. Fijes letter. Okay, seriously, who approves this font size? Get real. In fact, fuck this one. So something something. Senior exploits. We are the remnants. And we don't know how to write letters in Skyrim's font size. And we're gonna keep doing it because you'll still be buying whatever edition comes next with even more paid mods. We know it. And that time, the font size will be even smaller. <laughs> I just really dislike that font size. Just give me more pages. Anyways, let's rescue someone. Need something? Uh, you do. Correct. So, go on, what do you need? It's all in this note. Now, this conversation never happened, understood? Or what? I'm the Dragonborn. There. Thank you, thank you. Let's see. Ah, fine. <laughs> we have agents that have lived in Skyrim for over 20 years, ever since the Altmeri Dominion withdrew from Hammerfell. If the Thalmor ever plot to betray the terms of the Second Treaty, we will know and we will be ready. Gather intelligence from two remnants regarding the whereabouts of Rakid. One should be found behind the miners' barracks in Carthwaston. The other should be waiting for you in front of Villamirian in Iverstad. They'll respond to the phrase, the ravens take flight once more. And yeah, yeah, I'll stop complaining, it's just... These are voiceovers, I only have a quarter of the screen with the playback. It's just what happens when you're not a streamer. And you plan a 100% run. I can't be stopping that much to check notes while I'm recording. Anyways, Sarayar. Yes? The ravens take flight once more. I understand. Anyway, it's done. Time to move on. Also, I also do it for pacing. Anyways. Met a hunter from far out west, bought him a drink, and found out the wagon was headed up towards Skyrim along the southwestern border from Hammerfell. He should pass by Cinderstone Gorge on his way through. Not a lot of folks on that uh, road these days. Still, he didn't say how many there were or what they looked like. We need to find out more before we know for sure it's Ismail. And I was done complaining, but come on, that didn't even fill the page, bro. Yes? The ravens take flight once more. Of course. Of course they do. Let's both get on with our lives now. <laughs> Why are you giving me attitude? Let's see, you overheard that a Hammerfell noble from Sentinel would be crossing the border in the next few days and pay the hefty coin purse to the Thalmor to ensure safe passage. Said he was traveling by wagon all the way to Blacklight in Morrowind. It has to be Ismo. And if it is, Rakid is with him and he's in trouble. Blacklight is a huge city, easy to hide in. If we don't find him before they make it to Blacklight, we may never see Rakid again. Well, time to report. Out with it. Ismail's been traveling with a caravan of Thalmor to Morrowind. You've done well. They'll enter Skyrim from the southwest, passing by Cinderstone Gorge. It just so happens I've got some scouts along the road. Meet up with them, and together, see if you can't overpower the caravan. <laughs> of course we can, sounds great. Here, this is for you. What is it? Ooh, remnant equipment. Stay sharp out there. Nice, I thought I would have to uh, complete the quest for the unique stuff. But no, it's part of it. Remnant agent. Now that's probably some Morrowind thing, but I never played Morrowind, so I don't know. You guys let me know. Oh, that looks beautiful. <laughs> I like it. It's weird, but it looks great. Though, I'd still use the two scimitars instead of the shield. Oh, <laughs> no talking, just on with it. Okay, then. Will do, will do. Oh, I was expecting more Thalmor. Hmm. A nicely hidden strongbox, although very miscellaneous. Ricky. Please, have mercy, I beg you. You are now rescued. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Back to the boss. You made it. I'm impressed. It was a gamble, but turned out well. I'm the Dragonborn, of course. Thank you. Here, this is for you. May the gods keep you. They already do, and... All the Daedra as well. Now, the next unique weapon is in Foral Host, which I've already completed too. And this one is really just by the word wall after the whole dungeon. 
you'll find a lost paladin, and on it, well, on him, you'll find Chrysomir. Now, to Champion's Rest, where we'll find, obviously, some more goodies. Vigilance Reports I, Cassipius Sagnus, Vigilant of Stendar, do hereby issue this report on my investigation into the reports of a dark presence within Champion's Rest. Champion's Rest is the site of an ancient battle arena where Nords would test their metal in gladiatorial combat. Long believed to be lost to time, it was recently uncovered by mining prospectors near Shore Stone, after discovering a new deposit of silver. Upon discovery, the miners say they witnessed a ghost-clad head to tow in armor. While this alone was cause for concern, what they said next was even more foreboding. The spirits yielded a massive blade, which seemed to whisper to them in their minds. This hints at the workings of a powerful Daedric artifact. The only relic that matches this description is Umbra, once believed to be lost or by some accounts destroyed. Umbra is a sentient weapon who corrupts its bearer and compels them to kill so that the blade may feast on the souls of those it slays. It appears to have resurfaced here, though why I cannot say. If the apparition that haunts this site truly is the resurgence of Umbra, then it has grown very powerful and Shorestone is in grave danger. We're getting a boss fight. Oh, my man just dipped. Is that Umbra? Ooh, that is a lot more coffins than I am comfy with. But it, eh, they're not triggering, so it should be okay. That's a puzzle, but there's another thing. Another one. Okay. That's the locked door, but can I just... Oh, I... Uh, okay, yeah. Understood. Two puzzles. Two chains. It's extremely self-explanatory. Oh. Oh no, it's a death lord. Those things take so long in legendary. Oh, thank god for paralysis and the Dromoris. So, okay, snake, eagle. Where's the other one? Oh, that's gotta be dolphin. Yeah, it is. So, snake, eagle, dolphin. That should be it. As easy as always. Oh, but there's no lever or, or anything. So it's just that and then I pull the chain up top? Is that it? Oh, I was right. Okay, okay. Dromora sign. Hey, the, the thing is not showing up, but the inventory is, so we're good, I guess. Anyways, that should be it. And it is. Oh, but now I just know the rest of the, uh, the coffins will open up. I'll take all the goodies. Yep. Yep. Obviously. Are we done? We're done. Okay. You better work now. Come on. Yeah, lovely. Lovely. Let's move on. I'm quite curious to see Umbra. Now, fun fact. I had to re-record this whole dungeon because... My settings in the app that records the screen. It was... Ah, oh, set to New Vegas. So, all I did was record audio. Anyways, I found a dragon priest at first, but then it was, uh... The Death Overlord. Now, Umbra, you have to wait until he spawns three images of his soul, and only, ta only then does he materialize. So, that's the only interval where you can attack. This took forever. But it was fun. It's a nice change of pace. I'll take the key. Some goodies. Oh, that's not unique. But Umbra is. Fills Soul Jam, absorbs health and stamina. 25 is not bad. And that concludes Vile Whispers. Next up, a Soul Divided. Which I've started two episodes ago and I uh, kind of stumbled upon as well on the, on the previous one. So yeah, we're finally doing it. Now, one of these three doors is open, so let's just explore. Defeat the Guardian. You know how that goes. And to be honest, with this strategy, even in Legendary, it was pretty chill. In 
Investigate the north chamber. Okay, so another one. Old smuggler's notes. Damn the mages with their magic. Things were good here. Life was sweet and profits were aplenty. But that was before the boss agreed to help these fools with their trap. This venture will cost us the shirts off our back, I'll wager. Okay, so that changed color. But it's still blocked. Okay, then. On to the next garden. Oh, it spawned the Storm Atronach, but the ending is the same. Investigate the East Chamber. We'll do, we'll do. Torn Smuggler's Note. I can't resist him. Those eyes, those terrible eyes, so full of anger, fear and remorse. The only escape is death. Oh, so dramatic. Wait. Who's, who's Varric? Varric Tilwald. I didn't even read about you. Of that, I am very sure. Thank you for the emerald. We are doomed. There is no hope. Okay. Varric's note. Huh. I met Seychelle on a Mornda's outside the docks in the rain. Should have taken it as a sign. We've done business before, she and I, smuggling black soul jams, corpses, the kind of dark and dishonest things that would make grown men sleep in pairs. But this was different. This was big. The sword she gave me was like nothing I'd ever seen. Teeth like a slaughterfish. And a blood red jam in the center. I said it must have been one of a kind. That's when she smiled and told me there was another. My job was to swap them. We sealed the venture with a coin, of which more was promised later. The mage told me I'd be contacted in a week, a group of her associates would pay us to use the hideout to kill some captain, after which I'd make the uh, switch. She told me to keep this a secret from the mages, which made me pause, but the details didn't matter much to me. All I wanted to know was the number on the ledger. It was enough. Months later and the deal has turned rotten. The mages underestimated their own magic, and we, our own greed. Now we're all paying the price for our stupidity. Some tried to fight their way out, but the bastard won't die. I'm beginning to think he can't. On top of that, every man that he's felt has risen to fight beside him, making him that much harder to kill. I guess I have no one to blame but myself. I should have trusted my gut from the start. Mage jobs always have a bad stink on them. But this one smelled especially foul, but I wanted that gold. So bad, I convinced myself and the man it was Moon Sugar. The funny thing is, I don't even have bloodthirst anymore. I lost it at the pits at Faldar's Tooth, thinking I could just kill the mages and Gatharian once I got my hands on the other one. But when the spell went bad, the guild sealed the captain in these chambers and us along with him. Now all I have left is a festering... Wound, an empty stomach, and a mage's coin to show for it. Chances are, this coin is probably the only thing that will ever make it out of here. But oh, could it tell you a story? Because this coin has bought a lot of lives, it sold a lot of dreams, and spilled a lot of blood. I know now that the coin is cursed. Yet, for some reason, I can't let it go. Oh, and there we go, changing color again. Let me guess, barrier is still very much active. Obviously, yep. Oh, is that the third guardian? No, it just left. <laughs> Sala's journal. No, that's that's gonna be really huge, right? Right. So, two of the guardians. What? Why? 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 I mean, they're just skeletons, sure, but. Okay, guess I missed on the lore on that one, but I've been waiting so much. Come on, give me a break. Your attack has no effect. What do you mean? What do you mean? Do I have to take care of every single skeleton? Okay, defeat the guardian. Go on, bro. Join us. Oh, there it is. So it's not that thing. Is that a separate enemy? The other one. Still the guard, it changed color. Wait, is it gonna change color yet again? I, I'm so lost at this one. On my own fault, mind you. 
Oh, go on, Dromor, finish it. Thank you. Can I loot? Well, guess not. Oh, and the other one. Oh, okay, okay. That should be the last one. So let's start attacking. Also called the Guardian, I was bribed. Wait, Laurent Bouchard. <laughs> How many enemies, bro? Please tell me we're done. Completed. Return to the sword chamber. Blades armor. I'm not sure if that's unique, so... How about little showcase, and then, uh... Let's get our weapon. Okay, I guess the Guardian and his wife are finally reunited, which means we can retrieve the sword. Don Fang. So now, let's go and get Bloodthirst. Uh, yeah, I've done this dungeon too, so... Let's speed run it. Boss found the buyer for that sword we looted going through the crates downstairs. Says we are to deliver it to Broken Fan Cave come morning. Truth is, the thing creeps me out. I'm glad to be rid of it. Well, to Broken Fan Cave. Also cleared. Oh, this would have been such a different experience if I... Uh, well, not if I had bought the Anniversary Edition before I started, but if the Anniversary Edition came out before I started this one. And I'm uh, gonna leave it here. I'd like to give a big shout out to Steve Withal and to John Walker for their support of the channel. And to you. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, I hope I'll see you on the next one, and I hope you have a good one. Bye! And oh, what the goblin doing?